So people keep asking me, is the Nikon D3500 still worth it, especially compared to a mirrorless camera? Well, it's a pretty old camera. It's been out for over three years, but the answer will definitely surprise you because this camera has a lot to offer. So if you're interested, I've got you covered. So chances are you've been seeing the Nikon D3500 all over the place. And why exactly is that? Well, there's three major reasons for that. The first reason is the fact that the Nikon D3500 gave you a pretty top-notch sensor in 2018, and shockingly, even after three years, this sensor still holds up. It has a 24 megapixel CMOS sensor that shoots 12-bit RAW at five frames per second. And three years later, 24 megapixels is still considered pretty high resolution. The high resolution sensor combined with the fast shooting speed of five frames per second made this a pretty awesome camera in 2018, and it still is. Plus, it does full HD up to 60 frames per second for two times slow motion, which makes this a great all round camera. But because this camera is three years old, most modern cameras, even beginner models, now do 14 bit RAW, which is a pretty significant jump in data rates over 12 bit RAW. But you're really not gonna notice that unless you're doing some high end editing. However, in terms of video, this camera still holds strong, very strong many years later, but I'm gonna talk more in depth about the video later in this video, simply because that information is gonna make more sense to you guys later on. The low light and ISO performance in the D3500 is not great. If you crank the ISO past 1200, it starts to lose quite a bit of detail because of the noise reduction and grain. And the kit lens this camera comes with simply does not open up wide enough for low light work. But I have to mention the 18 to 55 Nikon kit lens is super solid and it's way better than the 18 to 55 Canon equivalent. But here's the thing, the Nikon D3500 is a great camera, but it becomes a really hard sell when you consider the fact that for only a little bit more money, you can actually get the Sony ZV-E10 or the Canon M50, which provides 10 frames per second, which is double the photo speed and it has better autofocus and it does 4K video. So let's talk about video next. The second reason most people look at this camera is video for casual use, because most of the time, this looks way better than your phone and it's way better than most beginner DSLRs. So most budget cameras have terrible video and terrible autofocus. The Nikon D3500 still shoots full HD at 24 and 30 frames per second for real time and 60 frames per second for two times slow motion. Beginner cameras in this price range usually don't have this kind of technology and they usually have a really awful budget video look to them. And the video quality in the Nikon D3500 is super solid. The image is sharp and detailed and it does not feel like a budget camera at all. Plus the autofocus is easily good enough for casual use. The autofocus is relatively accurate and it does a pretty good job tracking subjects. So when you compare the D3500 to most beginner cameras, this camera is pretty killer. One thing I quickly want to add to this conversation is the Nikon Z50. Now the Z50 is something like the mirrorless equivalent of the M50, which is a Canon camera. Originally, I wasn't going to add this on the list because it's over $1,000, but prices are dropping. So I wanna put this in here for when this camera inevitably gets to a really good price point. Basically, I'm saying it's gonna get cheap. So you obviously get the Nikon image quality. It has a 20 megapixel sensor, which is pretty good in low light because of that reduced pixel count. However, I do recommend keeping the noise reduction on this camera to a minimal. It looks a bit cheesy. You're better off doing it in Photoshop. And it does equally fast photos as the Canon and Sony cameras at 11 frames per second. The autofocus in photo mode, I would say is like a solid eight out of 10, but in video mode, it's closer to a six or a seven. It's definitely not on par with a Canon or a Sony camera. But despite the autofocus, I can still see a lot of people wanting this simply because it's a Nikon and they prefer the Nikon look. Also, because it's a Nikon camera, it's going to give you far more flexibility than a Canon camera when it comes to post-production. So a lot of you guys who are maybe influencers or wanna use this in a way where you're definitely going to be editing your photos and it's probably going to be pretty heavy editing, this camera is probably going to give you a lot more latitude than a Canon M50. Plus it does 4K with no crop and full HD all the way to 120 frames per second. That is basically on par with the Sony camera, but with the Sony camera, you do get cinema profiles as well. With the Nikon Z50, you only get something called a flat profile, which isn't really that great for color grading. But the main reason I wanted to mention this camera is because of the ergonomics. The ergonomics on this camera are as good as a Canon camera. If you watch my previous videos, you've noticed that I've kind of been like, Nikon cameras take a bit of learning 
and they're not as easy to pick up. But with this camera, it's as easy as a Canon camera. It's really easy to pick up. If you're new to cameras, if you're not really good with technology, you'll be able to pick this up and very, very easily get stunning results. So for those of you who want the Nikon D35, but are maybe just held back by the DSLR style body or the older technology in it, and you're willing to spend a bit more, I would also look at the Nikon Z50. But that doesn't mean the D3500 has lost this fight because the D3500 is still a great DSLR and a lot of people simply would want this camera because of the DSLR style body type. So let's talk about design because I think that's where this camera really shines. So reason number three, is the DSLR style body worth it especially compared to a mirrorless camera? Well, to be honest, a DSLR and a mirrorless camera works pretty much the same way. It's really about how they feel in your hands and how operation is in terms of button placement and menus. Most Nikon cameras work the same way, whether they're a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. If you understand one, you can pretty much understand the other. Now the Nikon D3500 does have great ergonomics. The buttons have a really awesome tactile feedback. The ergonomics allow me to smoothly and quickly operate the camera, get to the settings and change settings that I need to. Originally, I hated Nikon cameras for their ergonomics, but I've had this camera for about three years and I've grown to really love it. I was mainly a Canon shooter before this and Honestly, it's still not quite as good as a Canon, but it's super solid. And I only mean that in terms of ergonomics, not in terms of quality. But the benefit of a DSLR is really that hefty, robust feel in your hands, that super satisfying shutter snap, but most importantly, a lot of people love this, myself included, is that optical viewfinder, which allows you to directly see through the lens itself. Most mirrorless cameras have much smaller bodies, they're entirely digital, and they also provide newer technology and better technology because they are newer cameras. So at the end of the day, what's the verdict on the Nikon D3500? Well, the right camera for you really depends on you. For me, I love the look and feel of a DSLR. It just feels like a proper camera. But if you're someone that's not nostalgic about cameras, doesn't really care about the way a camera feels, I would definitely recommend looking into a mirrorless camera like the M50 or the ZV-E10 because for a little bit more cash, you're going to get a way, way better performance. But if you like the look and feel of a DSLR and you're on a really tight budget and you don't want to spend more, the Nikon D3500 is an amazing option.